Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, some of the council. I live in Milwaukee now, but I lived in Portland for eight years. I still work in the city and uh, may very well move back in the future. I come before you today to specifically address the public safety aspect in the state legislative agenda packet, which calls for supporting the universal background checks on those who want to transfer a firearm to their neighbor or friend. First off, I would ask any proponent of the universal background check bill to explain to the public how it would stop two criminals with malicious intent from making a firearms transaction in a dark alley somewhere, or how it would stop a grandfather from passing down his old rifle to his grandson. How would anyone know that background checks were not being conducted on such deals? My second issue with this is the fact that the city is complicit with the blatant violation of the already existing background check laws. Last May, the mayor and several officers with the PPB assisted Ceasefire Oregon with their illegal gun show, which consisted of more than 25 firearms being transferred without any background checks being conducted. A clear violation of ORS 166.432 and 438. You may remember, Mr. Hills, when I asked you about this on camera as you were leaving the event, you were very defensive and at a loss for words. You told me to go talk to the police. I already had talked to the police and they told me to leave the property after I began to cite ORSs. As I understand it, as mayor, you are the police commissioner. So I would ask if you are willing to turn a blind eye to already existing laws, isn't it kind of a double standard to want more laws regarding the same topics? Thirdly, I would ask Ms. Pellegrino to cite her source for her claim of 442 deaths in 2012 due to firearm sales in the state. According to the FBI website, there were 92 murders or manslaughters in the state in 2012. In fact, over the past 20 years, we have seen a decline across the nation in murders and violent crimes. Society in general is evolving, becoming more peaceful. This is despite the mass proliferation of firearms during this 20-year period. Furthermore, 2013 saw the fewest murders in Portland since 1971, despite the massive boom in firearm sales that took place at the end of 2012 and the first few months of 2013. One has to ask themselves, with the drop in crime, is another law really necessary? Fourthly, there were just over 2,000 people who failed a background check at gun stores in the state last year. As I understand it, it's illegal to even attempt to procure a firearm if you are a felon or if you know in some other way that you would be disqualified. I would ask Ms. Pellegrino or any other proponent of the bill to tell me how many of those 2,000 plus or 1.8 million nationwide were prosecuted. If the current system is, isn't even capable of pursuing the current offenders, how will it handle a theoretical massive increase for failed background checks? In closing, after hearing the information I presented, if people still support the universal background checks, then one can only reach two conclusions about such people. Either you are willfully ignorant and closed-minded, sticking your fingers in your ears, going, la, 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 I can't hear you, or you just want to pass a feel-good resolution. So you think you're doing something good, so you think you're helping people. That's your objective, then congratulations. But it isn't going to help anyone, and it isn't going to stop anyone from being hurt or killed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me just ask you a question, sir. Yes, I, sir. I'm a, I, I don't think we've met. I'm a little confused. So is your view that it's not strong enough, or it's not necessary? It is not necessary. And do you have a view generally about background checks? I think the very notion of background checks, uh, if someone supports it, then that means they presume people are guilty. Having a presumption of guilt about someone where they then have to prove their innocence sets a very dangerous precedent. For example, the DUI checkpoints that you hear about in the news every now and again that uh, people set up. I haven't seen it much around here, but I've seen it in other states. You know, they, they're just randomly pulling people off to the side of the road, pulling them out of their cars, making them submit to these checks without any reasonable suspicion that they've done anything wrong. Do you have written testimony you're going to share with us? I, I have the testimony here written down if, if you would like to have, if you have, If you can leave it with the clerk if you want to. And are you here as an individual or as an organ or representing an organization? I'm as an individual. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much. If you could leave us a copy, that would be helpful. Yeah, thank you. Just checking, I think your numbers are, don't account for the number of uh, accidental deaths and suicides. Okay, but well, I, again, I, I'm asking uh, Ms. Pellegrino to cite her source in the uh, legislative agenda packet that says 442 deaths. We'll find yeah. out the source of that number, but I think uh, what Commissioner Fritz has made is sound, even if the numbers aren't exactly right. We had 16 murders in the city last year, 43 suicides, I think, documented as such. So it's a huge factor. Firearms are one of the ways.
ways by which people commit suicide. Well, well, would the background checks, though, if somebody wanted to kill themselves, would a background check every stop case, that? Not in every case, certainly, but in some, perhaps. How many gun deaths per capita are there in the United Kingdom? I, I don't have those facts in front of us. Okay, thanks for that. Mr. Novick, I would propose that maybe you should move to the United Kingdom. Okay, let's a little exchange facts later. Thank, thank you. you. And I want to thank the council very much. Thank you for having us.